Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, distinguished guests. Actually, yes, I'm not a politician. I'm just ein Angestellter. You know what that word means in German. It's like a, an employee of this piece. Ein Angestellter that, um, of this clock, because the task that was given over to me started on 9th of November in 1989. Dear Mr. Don Fried, peace through cultural diplomacy is the guiding star of the Institute of Cultural Diplomacy. It is with this in mind that you have this outstanding annual conference in cultural diplomacy here in Berlin. I repeat here and I repeat at other places, peace and peaceful change call upon us to serve, to give all of our energy, our courage and our skill. But it is equally true that our service requires, above all, time. And often so much time that one life alone is barely enough. Time is a powerful resource for establishing peace. It took 44 years before the Cold War was overcome without war. And 28 years for the Berlin Wall to collapse peacefully. Dear Mr. Dornfield, ich bin ein Berliner. And as a Berliner, I'm very grateful for your invitation. It touches me even more here in Berlin, in my hometown, to be able to present the very special contemporary witness of peaceful change, the Berlin Peace Clock. It was in the heart of a divided world the heart of a divided Germany, Europe, in the heart of a walled-in West Berlin that the peace clock came into being. It was invented actually in 1989, stood three meters high and weighed over two tons. It was designed to strengthen the peaceful hope to transcending the division between East and West and hasten the fall of the wall. <laughs> An antique church clock, almost in the shape of a Tory gate, has been placed between the two columns to show that the forces of peace can unfold only with the passage of time and never in opposition to it. Hence, the golden message in the architrave, time bursts all walls asunder or Zeit sprengt alle Mauern one day. And at the very same time as this specimen of clockwork art was being presented inside before 250 guests on 9th of November 1989, something inconceivable was happening outside, only a few hundred meters away. It was not a couple hours later, it was the hour of presentation, it was the hour of birth. The Berlin Wall collapsed peacefully. Human beings from the East and the West fell into one another's arms. The Cold War was over. And as we in Berlin raised our glasses to this clock, the path simultaneously opened before us, as if by miracle, the path of peace and reconciliation. A new epoch began as a chance, leaving behind the age of the Cold War. Let us briefly, if you allow, recall a few figures from the arsenal of terror of the 80s. The Berlin Wall was 155 kilometers long. Here alone, 11,500 soldiers were guarding the border defense system with its 300 watchtowers. The wall, which was 12,500 kilometers long, ran right across Europe. There were more than 55,000 spring guns and 1.3 million buried mines. Five million NATO and Warsaw Pact soldiers were on standby on each side of the Iron Curtain. There were 65,000 tanks belonging to the Warsaw Pact States and 27,000 to NATO, 24,000 NATO aeroplanes and 18,000 Warsaw Pact craft aircraft, 
2,000 warships belonging to the Warsaw Pact states and 1,500 to NATO. 2,032 missiles with not 100, not 1,000, not 5,000, 11,000 nuclear warheads on the NATO side and 2,490 missiles with 10 thousand nuclear warheads belonging to the Warsaw Pact states. There were some who wanted to count in terms of mega deaths and to extend the arms race to the stars. Many despaired and nearly everyone believed that the war could be overcome only at the price of a third world war. That is until 9th of November 1989, when this war nightmare found its own peaceful end. Yes, people danced there, and yes, there was life where there has been a death strip once. The Berlin Wall collapsed in a festive atmosphere, creating an opening for a new age, possible age. And that was the very moment when we in Berlin were setting the peace clock in motion. No contemporary witness anywhere in the world has ever come closer to this epochal moment in which people experienced a sense of peace and reconciliation. The sparks of joy on the 9th of November 1989 really were present in the Berlin peace clock. The Berlin Wall's hour of death signaled the birth of the Berlin peace clock. For at the very moment it was proclaimed, its promise started to become true. Time bursts all walls asunder. Ever since 1990, we have been seeking opportunities to proclaim this joyful message of peace everywhere and for all the friends of peace. From 1992 on, seven replicas, approximately 30 centimeters high, of the Berlin peace clock have been made. They went first to the east and the west to, not, to those politicians of international standing whose temperance had done so much to help end the Cold War and bring down the wall. In this context, I should like to mention Mr. Gorbachev, the general secretary of the CPSU. President of the USA, Ronald Reagan. President of the United States, Bush, Sr. Dr. Helmut Kohl, Chancellor of Germany. A peace clock that was very, very dear to me went to Mother Teresa in India because peace does not begin in the lofty heights of world politics, but with those closest to us. During the years since 1989, the Peace Award Berliner Friedensuhr Berlin Peace Clock, was partly supported by different personalities, organizations, the Berlin Senate, and up till today by the Berlin UNESCO Committee. Peace Clocks have meanwhile gone to those who have sent signals of hope on the road to peace, to personalities and institutions that have been exemplary in overcoming the walls between people, classes, states, nations, cultures, religions, ideologies. It was the highest honor of all that the Israeli ambas ambassador, Adi Avi Primor, was the very first to accept this Berlin Peace Clock Prize as a peace prize. This is a gesture which commits us in a very special way, particularly against the background of the German war crimes and the Holocaust. And from here, my thanks go to the ambassador, Avi Primor, in Israel. In almost 25 years, the Berlin Peace Prize has been awarded to 15 recipients, including the EIAR, International Atomic Energy Agency, because under Hans Blix, it fought steadily trying to keep the window of peace open in order to prevent the Iraq war. And all this has made the Berlin peace clock even more important and its message more urgent than ever be before. We can and must choose the path of peace, but we shall arrive only if we move with time.
One Peace Clock has lately been awarded to Rotary International on the occasion of the International Rotary Peace Forum in Hiroshima. Rotary International has been pursuing this very path of peace for more than a century now, and this exemplary service has always been first and foremost a good deed performed in the service of our fellow human beings and working for peace. Whether it be in the founding circle of the Friends in 1905, in Rotary's cooperation in establishing UNESCO in 1942 or 45, roundabout, or in the Seven Paths to Peace, the Great Polio Plus Enterprise launched in 1985, and the presidential campaign motto of 2012 and 13 of Peace Through Service. And of course, in the great peace forums called into being by Rotary World President Tanaka in Berlin, Hawaii, and Hiroshima, and everybody understands why these cities had been chosen. To be on the path to peace means not only preventing wars in the future and ameliorating the suffering caused by wars in the present, it also means facing up to the responsibility of previous wars and past crimes against humanity and trying to remedy their consequences. This is maybe the most difficult task. Peace work is hard work and demands that we give all we can and often more than that for the news are alarming to all of us. It seems that about 65 million people are fleeing from war and violence and other life-threatening circumstances. 24 million people live in North Korea and 50 million people live in the South. And the powers that be in the North openly threatened a nuclear war. It is not always easy to believe in the success of peace work and to continue working for world peace. Sometimes we need something that will give us courage amidst the horrors of our world. But hope, like a guiding star, keeps us awake, even when hope may seem to have disappeared. The Berlin Peace Clock is designed to give us hope. It is both a bearer of hope and a guiding star. And its message is as great as the star is small. That the walls of war will collapse and the walls of hatred fall and that the paths of reconciliation and peace will open as time passes. And that is the promise in the phrase, time bursts all walls asunder. No matter where we stand, however hard pressed we are, how hopeless everything seems, it is only if we jointly and steadfastly perform our duties towards peace, that peace in time will truly exist in the world. I've become acquainted with so many wonderful peace activities here at the ICD in Berlin. The peace work of ICD and above all, Mr. Don Fried, you show us with your ambition just how close together these two messages belong, cultural diplomacy and time bursts all walls asunder, or in German Zeit, sprengt alle Mauern. Thank you for your invitation to this conference here in Berlin, dear Mr. Donfried. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to remind us with this speech of the most peaceful revolution in the world that changed so much and culminated finally in the fall of the Iron Curtain, in the fall of the so-called Berlin Wall. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lawrence. We'd be happy to take some questions or comments from Mr. Jens Lawrence uh, regarding private sector cultural diplomacy or also civil society cultural diplomacy. Any comments or questions? In the back, okay, please. And please introduce yourself as well. Oh, we have a microphone, okay. Hello, uh, thank you for a very inspiring and touching presentation. I'm Tatiana, I'm consultant for intercultural questions in education and artist. Uh, and I would like to ask you, uh, could you maybe describe or uh, tell us some, uh, 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 a bit about the mechanism of the uh, peace clock? How is it moving? It is about peace in motion. You mentioned it on, on the beginning of your uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. So, 
I don't know if I making... correctly understand. There's there's the moving of its ideology, and there's the moving of the moving parts. So the moving parts, they have weights and a pendulum, and you have to wind it up. And the moving of what's moving inside, it, it says in script, a time bursts all walls asunder, and the script is interpreted here on the columns because they seem to brittle apart. They seem to, like, time will really actually open this gate into a new time, into a new being, into a better world, so to speak. So we were hoping with this design, or I was hoping with this design, that one day it would be overcome the Iron Curtain, that it actually happened on this same day and same hour, so that actually birth of the clock was death of the Berlin Wall, its own content. That is like how it moves and how when I went to see the future recipients, because from then on, to, since 25 years, as I just explained, the people and the, the personalities whom I approached, they first said, yeah, what, what do I do with the clock here? I, I don't understand, you know? And then I called and explained, I had an appointment. And when I told them the story, then very often they were just stunned and said yes. <laughs> so with loading itself up with all these stories of the past, it is actually giving more and more strength to it. I, of course, could never have invented a peace award. I mean, who am I? Because the situation at our place was so special and so something outstanding, I had to either throw it in the corner and say, okay, it happened, or I had to pick it up like a diamond and say, okay, do something with it. So it was never my intention to do peace awards. It was never my intention to anything. It was just a symbol, a piece of art, hoping for the overcome of the Iron Curtain. And things evolved out of it by itself. So that's why I said I'm an Angestellter of the task of this clock, but not a politician. Thank you. Thank you very much. The final question here in the front, please. Thank you. Um, what an amazing presentation and also what an amazing thing, your, your peace clock. My question is, I know you didn't intend it to be what it has become, but it has become a symbol of the possibility of, of the peaceful point. revolutionary change. I'm going to ask, how can we use that clock of yours to target two groups that want change, and rightly so, when, for example, there's lack of democracy, there's violation of human rights, and there's unequal distribution of resources, they are impatient for change. And those two groups are young people and politicians, politicians who are excluded from the cake. How does business and you maybe working with private society, with business all over the world, but particularly my interest in Africa, use the story to generate an appetite for moving change peacefully? Thank mm -hmm. you. I'm not a politician, as I said, and this is definitely something to sit down and discuss and think about a little more on a long-term scale. Uh, but I think that the background that this symbol actually talks by itself in form and matter, it only reflects what had happened in Germany in the late 80s. And this is that the people went on the street fighting for their ideas, but fighting in a peaceful way and manner. So no arms but going on the street and demonstrating in a democratic way, and then finally with uh, geduld, uh, how to say? patience, patience, patience. patience uh, get to a point where the fall, the fall of the wall uh, could finally take place. But patience is very important, endurance, and to use this story and this background in order to do peaceful movements on the street that, of course, is the idea that could be used and, uh, of course, ha have a travel to any country and talk about it.